we've got some good football uh, that will be played this coming week. And uh, let's start with a little bit of a crossover. Number eight, Bethel down in Tennessee. They play host to Division Three, what has been known as Division Three powerhouse. The last year or two, maybe not so much. And Mary Harden Baylor, very closely removed off of a national championship, uh, missed mm-hmm. the playoffs for the first time in, man, couple decades like this is talking about a team that is really trying to 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 come back and and be back on that national stage Bethel playing host to them what are we uh, expecting going into this one to see from that squad yeah I don't Bethel's in a weird situation this year they have a lot of restructuring to do their team was very senior heavy last year yes um and they they have a lot of new things going on D3, like high tier D3 to high tier NAI is such a weird matchup because you never quite know what the comparison there is. Um, So I'm just curious to see how Bethel comes out against new competition and how they can get things rolling for guys that are going to be in new positions. So I... Yeah, and they picked know. up a win uh, in is it technically week zero, week one. I mean, how does yeah. that on the NAI side? Like, how does that work? Yeah. Yeah, so it was week one this past week, and week okay. zero had happened the week before. So, got you. So they pick up a win over Point, which is a team we talked about a little bit, and obviously one that deserves some respect. Is obviously it wasn't a cakewalk for them. Twenty to six, they pick up that yeah. win. And I think the biggest note for me is is someone we've talked about uh, at least and posted about just because his stat lines have been crazy. Is uh, Joaquin Colazzo the third there at quarterback for Bethel? And not seeing his name on the box score makes me assume that and not on the roster. He's out of there. Do we know uh, where he? ended up i didn't have i guess enough time to do the research but uh that is a lot of production that they are losing at the quarterback position when you look at uh his career stats under center the dude threw for over 3500 yards last year and 37 touchdowns that is tough to replace yeah it's it's really tough to replace because he was absolutely fantastic for them he was the heart and soul of that offense in the past couple years for them um, and I don't know if he transferred out. I am just pretty sure that he's just not on the team. He either graduated or is just done. So interesting. Yeah. Cause I thought he was like listed as a, as a junior and, and we know better than probably anyone that like finding information for small school football sometimes can literally be yeah. like pulling <laughs> teeth. Yes. You so. might be better off going to your local public library and trying <laughs> to find newspaper clippings. Yeah. At certain That's- points. 100% but, uh, true, so can't confirm, definitely, but definitely yeah, excited for that, though. That, that matchup is going to be good. Uh, I'm excited about the offensive backfield for the Mary Harden Baylor squad to see what they do uh, offensively. And, and then the, obviously the defense has a step up. But that's one area I think I'm looking for uh, from the Knights there. And if they can pull off a win like that, um, it won't necessarily count for them in the D3, you know, kind of landscape of things, the way the playoffs are structured and then kind of how they how they rank things. But is what it is. Let's talk about that Montana Tech squad again over at Carroll. What are you looking to see from this one? And I think, you know, pulling up the history here of their matchups between the uh, uh, those two squads, if it'll load up here. Carroll's got a really good record in this one. 59 wins, 18 losses, and two ties in the history of this matchup. Now, last year, though, Ordiggers took it 23-17. Can they mm-hmm. keep it going and uh, build off that one? Yeah, I mean, Carroll is an AIA royalty. They have spent a lot of time playing winning football, winning championships. Um, I'm kind of surprised the rivalry is that lopsided, but Montana yeah. Tech has had a lot more valleys than Carroll's program historically, so I I could see how that's the case. Um, but, man, Montana Tech coming off an emotional win. you got to go on the road to hostile territory against the Carroll team that feels like they are not where they need to be right now um, as a team that is not in the top ten currently. So it is really curious to see how Montana Tech is going to respond. You know, the week after an emotional win can sometimes be difficult. We see that all the time in football. And Carroll's not a team that's going to care. They're going to have no sympathy. They don't like each other. I mean, this is a big rivalry game. Um, And it already means a lot in the frontier. But beginning of the season, we're already starting conference play. It seems like every game in the frontier matters for something because they just beat the crap out of each other. But I'm really curious to see how Montana Tech responds to last week. Um, Yeah, should be a good one. It will, and it'll probably be one on the ground. I mean, Carroll's not a team that we saw a ton of offensive firepower from last year when it comes to, like, blowing out opponents. Uh, They won a lot of quality football games, but the margin of victory maybe is something that they weren't incredibly 
known for. I mean, just over 23 points per game last year, and you're still seven and three, mm-hmm. five and three in that conference uh, is very impressive. And uh, when your rushing attack is is certainly become the focal point for them in that physical style. I mean, we'll see what it looks like. Um, their conversion percentage on third and fourth down is not something that looks incredibly enticing under 50 percent on on third and then you drop down to like 35 on fourth so uh not something where if they if they get off schedule that's something that can slow them down a lot especially early on and uh, if montana tech can keep the ball away from them and play that kind of game of keep away so to speak i would yep. certainly look for that to be a big indicator of i mean any team winning if we're being honest but uh Definitely excited for that one. Let's keep it moving down. We've got uh, number three, Georgetown. Well, formerly number three. You've got to imagine they take a couple yeah. drops <laughs> down in the poll. Uh, but uh, they're at a squad that's receiving votes in Pikeville. And, uh, you know, the first time I had the note there, the first time Georgetown has lost their home opener since 2019. And I, I will also note, no, no discredit to some of those other squads, probably the toughest opponent, easily the toughest opponent they've had in their home opener in that time span. So uh, not to be a stat that's, you know, you're not gaping. It's too crazy of a stat. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but Pikeville, man, this is kind of an interesting team. Both these teams are coming off pretty decent losses. I forget who Pike, you Pike just played, but I know they lost their previous game. Um, but man, this is Pikeville's kind of that sneaky team um, in the conference that we weren't quite prepared for last year. Very curious to see how they play a kind of battered Georgetown team that frankly is probably pretty pissed off that they have yeah. a loss on their record right now. So um, should be a good one. I imagine that there's going to be emotions flying, but Pikeville, man, they're, they're a team to watch out for. Um, they have some good momentum rolling, so... And in the history of this one, too, when you look at uh, that, this one very lopsided as well. Pike has only taken two of the 17 matchups. 35-14 was the matchup in September of last year for Georgetown. I mean, I guess we're not technically going through and making game picks. I would certainly say it's safe to assume that it'll be a, a similar score, but you never know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you never really know. That's that's the fun part about a lot of these games this early in the year. So. Yep. Absolutely. And then we'll uh, close it off. We've got uh, a couple more matchups to talk about here, and we'll kind of quickly go through these ones. Number 10, Morningside, trying to bounce back at Concordia. They are uh, Concordia coming off a 45-7 win over Waldorf. Now, again, no discredit to Waldorf. Not really a huge shocker or surprise there. Uh, I mean, expect this to be a really big bounce back game for Morningside in short. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think Concordia is worth mentioning here because yep. they're a team that I was high on in the preseason because they're – Every few years, they cycle through enough guys to where they have a lot of returners and their defense looks horrifying. They're in that spot currently. So I am like, this is borderline top 25 Concordia here. So could have some implications if Concordia can do the impossible. Yep. And then you go down in a Texas Wesleyan team that uh, we're assuming will probably be in that poll uh, in the coming week. Going down, taking on number 16, man. This will be an exciting one. Talk to me about uh, what you see there. Yeah, going to be an exciting offensive game. Uh, Ottawa, Arizona, known very often for their high-powered offense. Um, Their defense is going to be in a decent spot, too, this year. But, man, this is, like, this is playoff implication. This is conference championship. Like, in week two, we are already here for the Sooner. Um, They're hosted it real early, and I'm excited to see how it goes because uh, Ottawa is a good football team in Texas Wesleyan. I think this will probably determine the conference. So, it's... uh, Definitely worth watching. Should definitely put it on one of your monitors, but I like it. Be paying like attention it. to what happens and take note because that's that's one that's gonna have big implications going down the road. And then another Ottawa squad out of Kansas. They're at number twenty four. Friends, who uh, I know I've became a fan of them last year based on their offense and the way they play ball down there, uh, the Falcons. But what do you what do you see there? Yeah, Friends is bringing back a lot of old linemen. They are still pounding the rock. They're still a very good football team. Ottawa, Kansas in an interesting spot because they squeaked into the playoff last year, pretty much on the stipulation of there being two different divisions in the KCAC that they went like six and five. Um, So they're receiving votes. They're in an interesting spot, though. I don't know how long they're going to be there, but there's still something to be said for winning your side of the conference. So for now, I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt and small sample size for this year. So I think that'll be a decent game. And honestly, with friends, if that offense isn't, going a hundred percent or you know they're not operating at what we've seen them operate at before it's going to be a very slow very low scoring game which can be anybody's so 
Absolutely. And we'll finish off with a really good one. Number 22, Louisiana Christian at number 12, St. Thomas. And from what I saw, this is the first ever meeting between these two squads. And it just so happens to come when both of them are top 25 nationally recognized programs at the time being. Now, also worth noting, neither team gets film on the other from week one, I guess, so far because they just haven't had contests yet. So that's something uh, definitely worth noting. I think there's there's a couple of these on the list where the other team's already got film on their opponent where it doesn't work vice versa. So that's definitely worth noting. I think some of the biggest points for me looking at the some of the returners and I, some of the uh, departures from both of these squads, Louisiana Christian losing their top rusher in Devin Briscoe, who was a thousand yard plus uh, production piece last year. They're starting quarterback Sam Pal- uh, Palermo, excuse me. He's also out of town, I believe graduated and moved on. Rontavius Farmer, who we've posted about and talked about a little bit for St. Thomas is back 1800 plus yards in 2023. They do lose two of their three top pass catchers. So, Moving pieces all across the board, still two teams that have been given national respect. Who has the mm-hmm. edge going into this one? I got to think it's St. Thomas. Louisiana Christian right now is at a bypass where they also had a lot of seniors last year. Um, last year was the culmination of the past couple of years that program has been putting in to itself. Um, and they it obviously paid off for them, made it to the playoffs, had a fantastic year. But they're starting to feel some of the repercussions of that now. Not entirely sure where their heads are at or their rosters at with everything they got going on from the offseason. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see who, you know, who's going to step up for this team. Because at the end of the day, for Louisiana Christian, that's what has to happen. Your young guys have to come through. St. Thomas definitely has the edge. Rontavius Farmer is absolutely ridiculous. Stug. Every time I talk about him, he's doing no. something crazy. So, Excited to watch him, but obviously it's going to be easy to key in on him too when you don't have a lot of receiving talent coming back. So Yeah, I hear you. I'm excited mm-hmm. for all of it. Thank you once again for joining me, brother. It's great to have you back and, and provide your insight. Knower mm-hmm. of ball right there. Yes. Did you want to finish out on that stat line there? I see you got that up Dude, there. I'm, I'm highlighting the stat line. I need, I need everybody to lock in here for a second, okay? <laughs> so Gerald Monroe from Graceland. This is a guy last year that was third on his team in receiving after playing like four games the entire season and got hurt or had, uh, I forget what happened, but he didn't play that much last year. Third on the team in receiving yards after playing four games. Just like ridiculous stuff, right? So we expected a big year from him this year. Comes out, decides to catch 17 passes for 387 yards and five touchdowns. Uh, Tet McMillan, eat your heart out. You had a fantastic game, brother, but this is this is different. Yeah. It is different out here. Hell yeah, it is. Hell yeah, it is.